okay so in the last session just we gone through these few points what is the meaning of vision applications and cloud computing and different models available or different options available for a client to choose the cloud subscriptions now we'll go through this topic called as on premise and cloud platform what is the key differences when you look at this on premise environment and cloud environment so here here are few key differences when you talk about on premise application say you take in the license for fusion applications from oracle and if you want to main, manage those applications what you have to do is you have to go with a huge capex upfront investment that means you have to buy the server infrastructure and you have to get the resource technical team dba networking security experts so to manage the servers and other related uh, supporting work that is a one uh, key point which you have to understand a lot of investment uh, client has to pay before that client has to take the license so subscription always costs less than license amount okay so in case of license client has to spend huge amount and uh, they have to invest for server infrastructure and uh, when you when you go with on premise applications and the customer owned upgrades and patching so upgrades if latest if oracle is going to come up with the latest version if your client wants to move to the latest version from the current uh, version of application that has to be done by client only client team whom they deploy to just manage that application support or anything they have to do it as a separate project and any patch applications required in the and in terms of maintenance activity or any aspect of application issues so that also should be done by client team only and uh, here they have to depend on some data centers if required and uh, cu customizations also it's all about the will build the customizations outside of the application and we have to deploy and uh, it, when when we compare with the cloud practice and all it's uh, you can consider as its costly customizations and maintenance also will become a bit challenging and annual support and there are many other points managing their own network and security access they should have a the team and uh, outdated software uh, resulting in missed business benefits that means if they are not going to upgrade to latest version because customer has to take the responsibility of upgrading they may miss great business benefits i mean to say like uh, product related uh, new features as per their business requirement they may miss till they upgrade to the latest version so these all will become challenges if some client is going to use this oracle fusion applications with on premise option they have to take the license they have to buy the server infrastructure they have to deploy the technical team they have to manage everything and upgrade is not easy task for them okay so again uh, data center disasters recovery etc etc they have they should be ready to face all those challenges but if any client is going with cloud no subscription no registration no i mean to say no license is required okay no license is required directly they can take the subscription that is the first point there won't be any capex capital expenditure as an investment for the client it's all about subscription they can spend very less when you talk about upgrades upgrades can be done by oracle only oracle can do the upgrades depending on which uh, subscription they are choosing and the patching also will be done by oracle team only if you go with the cloud and uh, we no need client no need to have a their technical team i mean to say here dba team the dba team also will be managed by oracle only the data centers and all the risk they'll take the responsibility and other things just the network security since they are providing the cloud uh, sub, cloud uh, cloud services everything they'll have a responsibility your upgrades also will become easy since oracle will have a responsibility of upgrading on our request so for that just i mentioned a simple slide here the same rent a flexible service pay as you grow just you can take subscription for which applications for how many users as you grow like you can just increase that uh, number of user subscription or you can you can just go to uh, additional modules which you require as per your business process and in terms of security and all like uh, standard security and access from anywhere anytime that sort of flexibility 
uh, business will have when they go with the Oracle Cloud. In the same way, no upgrades, but latest functionalities via regular releases. Whenever Oracle comes with a new release, so being a client, we don't need to go with any upgrade, but they, still we can enjoy the latest functionalities which are available in the latest releases. Since auto upgrade, Oracle will help us. So that's how that uh, cloud applications, the cloud subscription or uh, cloud applications are different from on-premise applications. So this is the point we have to understand here. Any questions here to understand the primary differences between on-premise and the cloud? Any questions from anyone, please? Yes, uh, let's say how secure is the customer data, company data, so all this business that is uh, a secret. Voice, so, Charan? Charan, can you be a bit loud? So, I was just saying that how secure is the customer data? So, so how do Oracle, do Oracle share this data with their third parties? No, 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 they should not, right? Uh, that sort of uh, agreement, uh, the signing will be there with Oracle. They'll they'll take care of the, uh, I mean, the, the, see, because the business data means it's a very sensitive data and all, they should not share with third parties. And uh, they will just, they will take care of the data and all. That is the reason nowadays you can see uh, some, the banking sector companies also just started using the cloud applications. Data security point of view, what Oracle is promising, they'll take at most the best uh, security. Uh, I mean, the security they are taking care of. So that is the reason the clients are also not worrying about and they are going with this cloud. Okay, they have enough uh, security strategies. Thanks. So that, that's, how, that's yeah. how they are just managing the and securing the client data. They never share with the third parties. Okay, they never share with the third parties. That's what we have to trust. That's what they say. Lakshman, can I ask you a question? Please. Uh, Lakshman, I have a question. Like, uh, as you said, there was a security from the uh, data, uh, from the Oracle standpoint, they are taking, they're taking care of the security measures. But uh, in terms of the client, like when they have the cloud, Mm. Yeah, within uh, within the company or something, are there any firewalls or something that needs to be put in uh, in order to secure it as an additional layer or uh, yeah, just uh, you know? Yes, yes, yes. They'll be they'll be maintaining that firewalls uh, security and all that uh, pod level. Okay, pod level uh, they'll be maintaining. It's not like directly from client wise. Uh, the pods wise they'll be maintaining. That will be managed by client only. Sorry, that will be managed by Oracle only. Okay, as a client, we no need to do anything. Just uh, the security metrics and everything will be taken care by Oracle only. Just uh, we'll have a flexibility of instance uh, usage from any, any time, from any location. With a great, uh, you, very just with a very good user experience in terms of accessing and where the server response time etc will be very high and rich uh, lakshman if the if the client wants to wait on using the latest release can they do that wait in the sense I mean, if they don't want, let's say uh, tomorrow release 14 comes and uh, the client prefers to use release 13. I mean, not everybody wants to jump in on the new release, right? So uh, if they choose to, if will Oracle allow you to do that? Yeah, they can anytime, anytime. Or, that, that depends. If you are going okay. with the SaaS model, say you, you just, they started using the release 13 and say after one right. year, Oracle is going to release release 14. So just we have to send an email to Oracle, okay, saying that we want to upgrade to latest version. Within one day, they will do it. Just one day time they will take, they'll upgrade to latest version. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions here, please? If no questions, we'll just move on to next slide and we'll talk about it. 
Lakshman, I think the earlier question was, uh, if if release 13 is today, and if I buy Oracle subscription, cloud subscription, and I ask Oracle, I only want release 12, not release 13, will Oracle allow that, or it's mandated by Oracle to be on the latest release, and they just give you a short window within to get ready it's uh, the, before the system? It's, it's like uh, when release 13 is in the market and it's ready, if you are asking for 12, it's, it's ideally it can be fined as a, some odd uh, requirement, but still Oracle will be ready to support because many clients are already using 12, even they didn't upgrade, the reasons could be. Uh, they are not finding a great uh, change differences between 12 and 13 or else the reason could be they are running their missions the instance the subscription whatever they take and that could be not SaaS pass yes they'll be they'll be just giving you but if you are going to ask very older uh, versions they may not be in the position to support because if you start using you'll be facing some issues which they fixed as a bugs or stabilized certain functionalities in the latest Again, they have to look back those, they have to keep a uh, team uh, to support on all those issues which they identified fixed in the latest versions. Okay, if you now 13 is running in the market, if you ask for 12, they may give you, but they'll try to find the great reason why you are looking for 12. Uh, Lakshman, this is Rakesh, but that is only in the case of pass, right? In SAS, you can't be on the lower version you you can just for a some time like five six months until uh, until there is a time period and then i mean I, that's what my understanding was that yeah. after five six months even it's mandatory to go to the latest version in SaaS, right yeah it, it is a it's a mandatory not it's a your interest only it's your interest only but if you are just going all the time if you are uh, going to contact oracle saying that these are the issues i am getting and these are the causing because of some bugs etc then definitely they'll recommend you so boss you just switch to the latest version so that it would be easy for you and for us to just uh, you, uh, i mean just manage this instance and all that's all they'll be suggesting if you don't have many requests to oracle saying that these are the bugs i am facing if uh, instance you are running very smooth so in that case they may not force you but they can recommend you definitely. Even okay. because but they will support the... 13 is there in the market, okay. you don't need to look for 12, right? Right, right. No, no. I mean, I'm, I was saying that if you... Uh, I mean, I, I've already bought the subscription. I am on a I'm on, I'm on some release. Hmm. And maybe after 7-8 months, uh, Oracle releases the next release. I mean, they give the next version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in, that case, in that case, on a SaaS model, uh, can we wait... If we don't want that version for a while and then or there is a time limit that after that you have to go to the latest. No, no, no. That kind of uh, guidelines or information, we don't see anything from Oracle. So that's uh, all about our own decision. But say Oracle released, uh, now we are on 13, Oracle released 14 and you not yet upgraded, you and you, even you are on SaaS model. Now again, Oracle came up with release 15. Still you are standing definitely, they may recommend you or they may force you also. Okay, okay, but they'll support the, I mean, at least 13, I mean, they, if... They'll support, okay. they'll support. They'll give some okay. deadlines also sometimes if you're not moving. Okay, oh, Max, you okay. can use uh, till this time. Okay, that's how we can. Fine. So, hey, Lakshman, uh, this being here. Uh, so what about the patch, I mean, patch for a bug, let's say. So will Oracle force you to apply it or... Oracle will say, okay, uh, I mean, if customer uh, doesn't want to right away apply see, the patch. And see, 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 that is not a someone's interest. That is a situation where uh, the situation demands to apply the patch. As a business user, say you are using so-and-so application, you got some issue, and finally just you were just uh, you just checked in the Oracle support. You identified or you raised SR to Oracle they identified some patch applications required. In that case, there is no point to look at the Oracle interests or our interest. That is a situation where you have to fix that issue. To fix the issue, patch need to be applied. Patch application can be done by only Oracle in case of cloud. So you have to request Oracle saying that once you identify the situation we are, uh, we, we are facing like you, your team suggested patch application. So this is the time we request you to apply the patch and all. So then first they may apply on the test environment. They'll ask you to test if everything is working fine. 
they'll just schedule the time and they'll be applying the patch and the prod that's how it goes right it, it, it's not like and what, yeah yeah and what about if some different client uh, identifies the issue will oracle force uh, one client to apply that patch or it's no, fine no, no. i mean no no normally it okay won't, it won't happen like it's a client specific only so other clients okay. are facing how come we can apply those patches on our part no okay so even if sas model that, any, that goes fine any any case you take that is totally different okay yeah if we have some issue that required patch application then only we have to do because some other clients are facing we by predicting just we cannot go with patch applications or fixes so that oracle take into consideration uh, when they are going to come up with the new releases say in this version most of the clients are facing these bugs and all let's try to fix them where those won't get repeat in the next release that's how they take into consideration they may do that uh, patching and all and they may come up with a new release okay they don't play with the client instances by suggesting wherever patches are not required to apply okay fine so any other questions here please yeah is there like a same concept of dff and key flex field yes uh, in, we, have. In, uh, we have asked this okay yeah fine we'll be working on that also so we'll just we'll move on to next slide so here just i mentioned a few technology the changes the terms and the, the meaning of that see when you talk about the objects i mentioned here servers when you talk about servers in oracle ebs we know very well we have a just i written as a app server basically apache server we use in case of ebs but in the fusion totally they change that oracle web logic server they are using and when you talk about graphql user interface in case of ebs most of the functionality is managed with the forms very limited functionality is managed with the jsp pages java server pages say customer page supplier page bank accounts and legal entities these pages are maintained in jsp pages in case of ebs okay we are just uh, talking about by referring ebs release 12 in 11 it's a slightly different supplier customer bank accounts also we create by using the forms only when you talk about fusion applications uh, fusion applications are completely adf pages okay so adf pages only we use so, so single user interface if you are working on any task like ebs you don't need to open multiple layers of uh, forms so everything you can manage in the single page uh, that's how we they given the user interface and when you talk about workflows in ebs the workflows can be managed with the pl sql programming but when you talk about fusion applications if you want to just build a new workflow or if you want to manage how the routing and the customizations and all that everything you can do by using the bpl bpl we call as bpl bpl stands for business process execution language and when you talk about reports in ebs we have xml publisher reports but in fusion we have a bi reports for all the applications okay for all the applications we have bi bi publisher reports for gl in the place of fsg in fusion we have hyperion financial reporting and when you talk about analysis okay when you want to analyze analyze something in ebs case we use discoverer reports but in fusion we can use otbi reports otbi analysis you can conduct it's nothing but okay uh, oracle transaction business intelligence otbi stands for oracle transaction business intelligence that's how some uh, technology related a few changes there are many but just for introduction and all i just mentioned a few here so just for information going forward as a part of course we'll come to know many points and we'll be working on the same okay so these are the few points to understand when you talk about technology related changes and when you talk about some terminology some uh, uh, some function related changes the functional changes i mentioned between ebs and fusion so when you talk about access objective i mentioned as access if you want to access to any functionality, if you want to perform anything in any application environment, in EBS we require responsibilities. Without responsibility, you cannot do anything. You can log into the instance, no responsibility is associated with the user. You cannot do anything. So equal to responsibilities in Fusion applications, we have roles. In EBS, with the help of responsibility, you can perform any activity against any application related function. In Fusion, if you want to work on the Fusion applications, we will be accessing any functionality through roles only 
we have a different type of roles that we'll discuss as a part of our uh, classes okay and approvals when you talk about approvals in EBS we have AME approval management engine the workflows and in fusion they replaced AME with BPM business process management okay business process management and uh, data migrations are called it as data conversions in EBS if you want to do the data conversions okay so we require technical people to perform that conversions activity completely is a technical job where they just create staging table they extract the data from the flat files and they'll write many validations they dump the data into staging they'll create staging tables they dump the data they write many validations once data is validated they'll be populating the interface so we no need to do this kind of uh, very lengthy and uh, complex process in case of EBS the process is very much simplified by using FBDA file based data import okay file based data import and uh, other object here is setups and configuration in EBS if you want to do any configuration say you want to do the setups for GL you have to be in the GL responsibility if you want to do setups in payables you have to switch to payables responsibility for which application you want to implement you have to be in that specific application or say responsibility then only you can do the setups but fusion okay in fusion applications we have a FSM functional setup manager functional setup manager this is a centralized environment where you can do any application related configuration this FSM is only for setups at the time of implementation in the ongoing process of maintenance any setups you want to do or any setups you want to change we use FSM only FSM is the environment which allows us to do the application related configuration and you can manage those setups from FSM in EBS so we have to keep switching across the responsibilities or say applications to do any setups but FSM is a centralized place to do any application configuration the same way like uh, in fusion applications we have uh, social networking also so with however we use uh, Facebook and all so easily you can uh, share the post and you can just uh, comment on the post and like etc etc all the activities they are providing inbuilt uh, plugin within the fusion application say you are the user you are working for uh, payables application you have a team of 10 members for payables you can create one group say you are going to close the payables period you can intimate all of them saying that today we plan to close the period everybody will be notified the message will be passed within the fusion applications only uh, we have a that future you can just share it or else you got some invoice from suppliers a very big amount and uh, termed payment uh, due date is so and so date you there may be a situation where you want to communicate with others or else you just place some hold on the invoice and you want to communicate with others saying that uh, this is the reason we play just we specify the reason but still you don't go ahead with that payment some sort of communication which is required with your co-workers who are working in the specific department or uh, who are related to that specific process or anything so easily you'll be able to communicate by using the social networking uh, feature which is available within the fusion application itself we'll, we'll touch base on that I'll take you through how that can be used how we can communicate how we can group create the groups how we can share some documents so there are many other functions we know when you talk about social networking you've got many features similar to that in our fusion applications also there are many features they're given as a part of social networking for communication related to the application users and few application related terminology change changes i mentioned here in ebs when you talk about applications financials you could see in the fusion also as a financials only then ebs what you see as hrms so that you can see as HCM because in EBS HRMS that's their Oracle own product but in the fusion applications it's not their own product which they acquired now they are owning okay that uh, people soft product they are using the people soft HRMS is called as HCM human capital management and in EBS we have a project suit where you can find costing billing resource management project management many other applications as a part of fusion suit so the same uh, projects okay the project suit uh, what we have in EBS in fusion you can find it as a PPM PPM stands for project portfolio management which consists of project costing billing management resource management and other applications okay related to projects 
and when you talk about EBS in EBS we have only one database that is Oracle database but in F fusion we have a two databases one is Oracle database where you can store transactional data and SBA is also another database within the fusion applications which stores summarized balances in the multi-dimensional cubes in Oracle database data will be stored in the tables in SBS you don't find any tables you will find all the cubes multi-dimensional cubes this they taken from Hyperion so in the GL we have a Hyperion financial reporting if you want to use that functionality called as Hyperion financial reporting data should be available within the SBS database only not in the Oracle database so what are the data we have in the Oracle database as a part of GL the total data will sync with the SBS database once data is available in the Oracle SBS database that can be uh, accessed from Hyperion financial reporting which supports very faster and easy reporting and system administration part when you talk about system administration so in EBA in fusion we have Oracle identity manager and authorization policy manager OIM this is APM the OIM only you can call as IDM identity manager also this slide I just mentioned based on release 11 okay from 12 onwards in this place they came up with a security console now here in the fusion we have a security console where the security console will be running with these two background engines okay so that is the point that means a system administrator part what we have in EBS similar to that in fusion we have security console in the background you can find these two components only and this is how the user interface you can see in the fusion applications so completely ADF pages this you could see as a navigator this is how you can find the navigator no forms completely web pages single user interface so here the user yeah. access they have all you can see within the navigator yeah please so Lakshman uh, uh, yeah uh, the security console does it replace both the Oracle identity manager as well as authorization policy manager correct correct on IDM and APM they built uh, this uh, uh, security console to leverage that uh, two components functionality okay thank you yeah. Uh, the 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 Moark uh, the Moark MOAC, uh, which is not well. What is the equivalent in uh, Fusion? Uh, we have similar kind of thing. Same we have as this. Okay. So in just we call that uh, future as a MOAC Moac, but nowhere we see that name in EBS release 12 also, right? So here the everything we manage with the security profile definition in EBS. The same is applicable, and uh, you can uh, you have uh, that future in Fusion also as a security profile. So we can access multiple BUs uh, for uh, correct, the same correct. role. Like uh, yeah, okay. we we have that also as a part of our course curriculum. We'll be covering in our classes. What set of Lakshman, very quick question. Um, SBase and Oracle. Yeah. The data transfer between these databases. It is a seamless process. Yes. And, uh, yes. Seamless. It's a part of the seamless. It, the two speed. databases is a part of the fusion suite. See, it's a seamless process only automatic once you get the data into your Oracle database. So only Oracle database, GL schema only is connected with SBase. Only GL journals information only will sync with the SBase automatically. For that, we don't need to perform any manual task. It's SBase is SBase and Oracle database are inbuilt in the Fusion applications. Thank you. Yeah. So Lachman, the past database is as all Oracle database, no airspace, correct? So in any any SAS or PaaS, IaaS, all the uh, subscriptions has these two databases. So you can have a airspace as a PaaS too, where you can customize. Any, because airspace or see so SAS or PaaS or IaaS, you will be. It's all about the flexibility, the additional privileges to get additional privileges only. We are just uh, naming it to differentiate. Ultimately, in uh, SAS, you have to use GL and you need reporting. In PaaS, also, you have to use uh, GL and you need reporting. And IaaS, also, you have to use GL and you need reporting capabilities, right? So, because of subscription, uh, there won't be any changes in this what we are discussing. Only the limitation okay. you may have depending on the subscription. If you go with the PaaS, it will allow you to do the customizations. That's it. That is the additional advantage you can get. The basic fundamental things cannot be changed. 
Okay, and uh, what about the alerts and uh, notifications which was there in previous releases, EBS? No, no, no. Those and alerts and all you can set only on on-premise only, not in cloud. So you cannot have alerts. What about, uh, do they still yes. have the... Triggers, alerts and all these we cannot do in the cloud. Uh, that only you can manage in the on-premise. Okay, and what about uh, concurrent manager concept is it still there? Yeah, concurrent manager here that we call as uh, that uh, enterprise scheduler service that they're given as a separate component in the middleware. We'll be discussing the middleware part also. So here we call as ESS, enterprise scheduler service. The concurrent manager, concurrent manager task only here we call as ES, uh, enterprise scheduler service jobs. That we have. That okay. should be there to process any data or to and, submit the report. And uh, the document management type is there is no tool. All attachments will go into the cloud, correct? Right? Yeah, if all you will go and it, it depends like uh, how you are documents in the sense like uh, normally uh, with uh, some any document you create like say any transaction you create with that what you attach that will be stored in the relevant tables with the reference and we have a uh, some documentation data related uh, uploads and uh, exports and imports for that they given a separate uh, component called as UCM universal content management where you can process any files through that. That is for temporary uh, purpose normally we use permanently if you want to attach something and if you want to store the solution they given as a part of middleware but the attachment reference will be stored with the respective document. Let's say you are creating invoice, you want to have attachment. The attachment you can do it, the reference will have here but the source of storage for that is separate in the middleware environment to maintain those documents. Okay, so, the reason I was asking because that will uh, have the, your database size grow in leaps and bounds. And uh, I assume it's a subscription based, so it does not matter how much your data size is, even if it is 50 or 100 terabytes. Yes, yes. compared to Normally having what one. What people do is they don't talk about much on the data size and all. They have, all the time this talks about application and user subscription based on that they can have their basic calculations that's how they are offering the price if that is going to be totally different practice in our client case they may talk about it next for one question uh, maybe it's not uh, directly related uh, how long uh, if we are on the SaaS model uh, how long does Oracle retain the data is it like, is there any universal rule they follow? Or? See, that that they'll take care of uh, just uh, even for uh, long term, lo long term. It, it, see, if you are going to have, if you are going to have, uh, <clears throat> like your own server, own server environment, and you can just mm -hmm. maintain for long time, or else after some time you may schedule for archiving the data, right? right. It's a very a large volume of the data you could see with very, very big clients. Okay. So if okay. you have a thought on that, uh, definitely, that definitely we should have a word with Oracle. So mm -hmm. such kind of sen scenarios, how it, it can be managed, definitely they can help us. But normally there is no some, some, some documentation or some agreements uh, as a bullet point okay. they're mentioning. Okay. This is how it can be done. Uh, yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Venu. Actually, I yeah. joined the call. Uh, so a few weeks back, I was working with Oracle um, in terms of assessing uh, the cloud fitness to my organization. Um, so in general, the perception of how the data works is that um, even the question about the Hyperion, right? The data, they say, is a lifetime. We will keep it. But there are a lot of catches in the licensing. When I say that, um, they don't say that only we will have this many GB of uh, space allocated for you. Um, yeah, as you said, they compress and keep it. But when we uh, look at the services that cause this data, there are where they have the licensing uh, impact. Even for the question on the Hyperion, um, what it is is they will provide when you buy the SaaS license for say the financial ERP financial, right? you'll have some basic reporting um, abilities on the Hyperion. 
But anyone, any, if you want to do any additional uh, features of the standard Hyperion functionality and the space functionality, you have to buy SaaS license for the Hyperion product. It's as simple as that. It just, it exactly works as the same as today. So the licensing is pretty tricky. So that's why they say that SaaS license is that you buy SaaS license for few, uh, there is, they're using now cloud ERP, right? So you will be entitled to use your GL, blah, blah, blah. And they will give you flavors of BI, flavors of Hyperion, etc. The cubes are loaded every time you do a balance posted. However, when the license comes, you need to have additional purchase of the um, EPM suite. Yes. SaaS EPM. So that's how it works. It's exactly the same. Today, you buy financials, you buy, say, procurement licenses, then that comes a CM license. You buy Hyperion separately, OBA separately. These are all licensed separately. Okay. Sorry, just because I had a conversation, uh, long conversations with Oracle, building the products for us. So that's why I, I jumped in. Thank you for so, that. So, so thank Benio, you. Uh, thank you so much. You talked about the application. Thank you. Nice information. Yeah. Fine, Venu. Thank you so much. Okay. Any question? Venu, you, you talked about uh, the application license. What about the technical, the database license? That is irrespective, the same cost, uh, irrespective of the size, what you're going to use, correct? Right. SaaS is all tricky, right? It's the number of licenses and users you buy. Um, they say, for example, $600 uh, a financial suite license, for example, right? And you have 50 users, you will more use database. So there, because of the cost of now the database keeping and the service costs, they're not focusing in that area, but they're call, doing many other things like service calls, API calls. There are many components that we have to understand the complexity when we go into the pricing. However, as a developer, for example, I'm a functional person. I have, uh, say, minimum five or ten, ten uh, Fusion ERP licenses taken. If you're a small organization, it's sufficient. You log in, you do one or one multi-org setup, and then you know life is pretty straightforward. But uh, um, if you have a complex organization and making all the API calls in and out, um, so yeah, at that time, see, this is the thing, right? You'll have a license to some database, but you need, need to get a pass license for additional data usage in terms of any customizations around there. You want additional storage. But for the SaaS data that goes in, uh, any cloud application, usually they're not limiting, um, in general, the size of the database. Yeah. But the revenue models are very much different. user based subscription only. Based on, based on number of right. users only, generally data can be produced. Uh, very fundamental point, right? They generate revenue. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Fine, yeah. Yeah. Thank the, you. The, the license cost is really nice information. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, when you, the license cost, is it per year or per month? Uh, the subscription are, yeah. yeah, per the cost they say per month, but eventually you'll no. have a contract see, with some over yeah. See, normally that goes uh, long term base only. So even they used to do the price, the think nobody is going to take uh, monthly subscriptions and all. Okay. For the year piece, right? So if you yeah. take long term, the price will be, will be reduced. If you say like one year, anyway, you are not going to use just for one year. You never subscribe for one year. The more years right. increase, the price will they drastically they reduce. That's how you could see the price. Right. Three years, five years, that's how, yes. especially year piece, right? You look for yeah. a decade. Yes. And then even we budget, right? Minimum five years cost you bring into picture so when yeah. compared to an on firm install. Normally, you could see the clients uh, generally go with uh, three, four, five years. And they'll just have a plan of, let's see, for this two, three, four years later, we can. There may be a situation where we have to take critical decision. That's how they think. And uh, they don't take for too much long period also. I could see three, four, five years in few clients. Okay. Yeah. So, and with, with the Oracle ERP, we forget about it. Once you get there, you will be there because you spend billions of dollars implementation and right, you stay there. So yes. it's a long-term cost you will look at when comparing to the on-perm install or a comparative product. Hey, Venu, you mentioned six hundred dollars per financial user. Is that six hundred per month or per year? No, I, I, I was just trying to get a few. Raj, like it's just as a example, you take an example. Okay. Oh, an it's example. not accurate. Okay, okay, I see. Please. Fine. Okay, that's all. Just uh, thank you so much for the information, and we'll continue from. Yeah, let's move on. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Lakshman. Yeah, please. Question. 
uh, if we go initially on cloud and later we can convert into on premises see uh, it's not like conversion you cannot like uh, when you are on premise that means your uh, that uh, configuration data everything will be on the oracle servers virtual servers if you want to move to on on <laughs> i mean on premise it's uh, you have to take separate license again you have to start with the configuration so that is the reason just we have to have a uh, i mean decision making before we start with that we'll go with all the uh, just considerations and we'll take the decision it if you want to go with on premise uh, cloud to on premise again you have to do the same implementation the same you have to replicate the same configuration everything in our on premise server even if you are on premise if you want to move to cloud also same applicable yeah Right. Yes, there are two different products. Um, you know, there nowhere your ERP is connected. Either it could be SAP or Oracle. For example, if you want to go from SAP to Oracle, it's a re-implementation, right? Exactly. The cloud is same, different product altogether. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Yeah. And uh, so, so these are the few points here. Just I addressed. And apart from that, just I just given the user interface how it looks like in the Pigeon applications. It's so this is a home page. Once you land on this, uh, once you log into the instance, will be landing on this page. This is what are the icons we call as you call as Springboard icons. This is Springboard we call from here as a shortcuts directly. You can connect to specific function. So if you want to go to payables, you can click on that here itself. It will open invoice payments directly. You can click. It will be landing on the respective pages: invoice, workbench, payment, workbench. And if you want to see the complete uh, access privileges to this user, you can click on the navigator. Here is the navigator icon. If you click on that, it will open the panel like this. Okay, you can just select any one of the tasks. If you want to create journals, click on journals. It will take you, and you will be landing in the journals creation page, and you can create it. So just I just mentioned a few slides here. This is it's all about a supplier creation page, complete ADF pages. Okay. So that's all about these uh, few points which we kept for agenda in the last session, but we could not complete, and uh, we are talking about the same today. So now I'll take you through the course curriculum. Okay, we'll just go through the course curriculum. The course duration is going to be 70 hours minimum, and uh, <clears throat> so these are the modules we are going to cover. Primarily, we'll be working on Oracle Fusion General Ledger, Accounts Payables, Account Receivables. Cash management and fixed assets. These are the primary primary focused applications as a part of financials. Along with those financial applications, the basic configuration and process will be touching on these applications. So fusion expense, we, it's nothing but I expense as per EBS. We do the required setups and we'll see how to create expense report, how that can be approved. Finally, that expense report can be improved. Uh, imported into payables by following which process we'll see that when you compare this expense uh, future in e with EBS in EBS if you want to use you can use I expense as per a requirement otherwise expense reports you can create within the payables also right you can record the expense reports and you can convert into invoices in the payables itself the other option is you can use I expense from there you can import into payables application but when you look at fusion applications you don't have functionality as a part of uh, payables application. If you want to create expense reports, only the option is fusion expense, which is equal to I expense. For that, you need separate license. Okay. Uh, Lakshman, Please. one question, quick question here. Please go ahead. Yes. So, so I know it's just a bullet point right now. Oracle fusion tax. See, until e business, right? Oracle EBS, they introduced that. Uh, EBS tax, right? So where we have the tax setups and all that. Even after Oracle tax, you know, setups, companies still continue to use Vertex and Savrix for their tax purpose. So does that those integrations still work for Fusion or it's just going to be Fusion tax going forward only? Yes, yes, yes. See, the EBT, e-business tax solution only we have in Fusion applications. Just they name mm -hmm. it as since the tax. Uh, Solution we have in the Fusion application, they name it as a Fusion Tax. Nothing but EBT, EBS EBT in Fusion Fusion Tax. No difference. I'm just muting you. Like, please don't mind. Like, uh, once I done from done with that uh, discussion, you can unmute and you can raise question. Otherwise, we are getting some background noise. Please. 
so that is a point uh, ebs ebt only we the complete the r to r flow definition or other configuration everything we have in the fusion as is you don't see any difference the solution remains same because that is a standard solution which offered uh, by just considering multiple countries of uh, the tax uh, solutions so that, that that we have as is in the fusion application when you talk about vertex taxware and many other uh, tax uh, vendors related services yes that always you can integrate and you can load that geographies information other information which makes the job easy the amendments what happens over there that you can bring into the system where online data you can bring into the system based on that data you can just simplify the tax calculation within the your fusion application or ebs what you could do with the taxware and vertex and all in the same way you can just get that files and you can load into fusion applications how you do in ebs or else you can have a, a online interface uh, and where you can just get the data into fusion applications what are the necessary data need to be uh, necessary data you have to bring into as a part of fusion tax solution or else what are the data you want to update as it required as per the amendments what happens in the specific country taxation those you can do here also okay yeah so i i'm i'm just one just to elaborate on that right so so till now you know so for example if my company is using vertex you know we have the vertex software and license and whatever is required and then we get the monthly or whatever updates for any tax changes across the us geography and we upload that file Correct. so now going forward going forward with the saas model since we are not managing the database and all that so is, is are these companies providing any kind of web services to sync up their at one point they are not managing but we are using when you are using you can maintain the data okay it's all about data only right it's it's all about just the f- data file which you are getting you are loading that's it you are not disturbing anything right just there are tables and everything complete information that just we are loading in that so that is possible you can uh, use that vertex or tax where or any other tax in general related data that you can build a uh, online interfacing through sova services or else just you no need to integrate you subscribe uh, the service from the vertex and you extract the mm-hmm. file and you load into fusion applications how you load into ebs that's it Okay. And same thing is the and so last question. Same thing is applicable for uh, daily uh, currency conversion rates. Yeah, currency conversion rates. Uh, if you have some uh, some third party tool, okay, right, like that, that normally it's being integrated. Yes, yes. Keep updating the data in our application, or else we have a template they given spreadsheet. Within that spreadsheet, you can load the data into that. When you talk about spreadsheet, one is manually you can enter. the otherwise you can extract the data into that spreadsheet okay through middleware uh, i mean with the sova option the data you can just import into our application two options are available you can automate the process or else all the time you can do it through manual process spreadsheet option they given so lakshman uh, you talked about uh, so are there uh, connectors available for taxes like vertex third party tool and the currency No, no, not uh, connectors. Like uh, only connectors, inbuilt connectors are available for most of the Oracle Fusion products. For rest, also we have connectors, uh, like, uh, but not especially for this. Uh, what I can say, uh, <clears throat> this uh, daily rates. So see, in in Sova, when you deal with this integration, it's a very pretty simple. It's all about drag and drop kind of. Uh, environment you can find to map that other third party application feed data with the respect to uh, our application data fields okay so the web service yeah, okay the connectors we have but not for everything that, that okay and you said uh, earlier we had expense reports available in ap uh, mm-hmm. did you mean the type as expense in uh, ebs version which is not there in our ap now in the cloud you aware of uh, ebs expense report yeah it was i expense expense report correct um, i'm talking about payables you know right yeah 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 expense okay yes, i'm talking about the same payables you can create expense report that you can convert into a invoice right that right yeah that you cannot do in fusion if you want to create any expense report you have to create from fusion expense module Okay. 
Yeah. So that. And that comes to AP, right? Yes, that that, that will import that will convert into invoice through import process. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. That will come see in case of infusion that will come as a payment request into payables from expense report. We'll see that in the system. Okay. Fine. Just uh, here, just I'm trying to address. Primarily, these are the core modules which will be focusing more detail level. That detail course content also I given. And when you talk about fusion expense tax, purchasing, order management, product management, nothing but inventory, fusion inventory. These modules, expense tax, purchasing, product management, nothing but fusion inventory part, order management. These modules will do the basic configuration and uh, will go through the basic process. And we'll be covering the P2P cycle along with the financials. We'll do the required configuration from inventory side, purchasing side, approvals and all. We'll run through the complete process of requisitions, approvals, purchase orders, approvals, receipt creations, stock uh, on and quantity checking and invoice creation through matching. So that will cover as a part of P2P cycle. As a part of O2C, we do required configuration for item related specifications from inventory side and we'll do the complete configuration for order management and we'll create sales order. We'll do the booking, pick release, ship confirmation, how it's slightly different compared to UBS. We'll go through that process. Finally, we'll see the, uh, the execution of auto invoice creation in receivables. This everything we'll do in our own environment only. I'm not going to show you in uh, predefined or existing environment. Okay, it's completely from scratch. We'll be doing everything. And we will be covering AGS also, Advanced Global Intercompany System, a rapid implementation, RI we call. So with this, you can just load the data into application. Say you want to create the calendar, you want to create the primary ledger, uh, you want to create the chart of accounts, etc. All you no need to enter into the application to create. Everything you can just enter into this rapid implementation spreadsheets. The spreadsheets, very formatted sheets Oracle is providing that you can download from instance only. You can enter the data in that you can submit those to the application automatically calendars chart of accounts and uh, all the value segment values and uh, primary ledgers legal entities and uh, operating units nebius operating units in fusion we call as business units those everything will be created automatically that's how we have a rapid implementation approach that will be covering in our classes and when i talk about reporting we have a financial reporting studio frs as a part of GL, which is replaced with uh, FSG in EBS. Okay, the smart view as a part of Hyperion. This smart view and the financial reporting studio, these both are legacy of uh, Hyperion product. And BI report and OTBI is applicable for all the sub ledger applications, including GL also. And data conversions, uh, let's say data migrations, we'll be covering how to we'll convert, we'll execute the complete process in our classes. It's not like just how it can be done. I'm not going to explain. We'll do it. Okay, complete end-to-end -end process. Uh, we'll be executing the supplier conversions, customers conversion, AP open invoices, AR open transactions, assets conversion, GL journal conversion will be covering. And security console, which is equal to system administrator in our EBS. So here only you can create the users and you can create the roles, role assignments, custom roles creation, how we do custom menus in EBS and the Oracle Fusion Functional Setup Manager, okay, FSM, Functional Setup Manager. Here only we can do any setups and if you want to implement any approvals, that could be invoice approvals or journals approvals or requisition purchasing related, any approvals or expense related approvals, all you can do from BPM only, Business Process Management, which got replaced with a AM in EBS. Just as highlights I mentioned here, enterprise structure definition, the complete in EBS, how we define multi-org structure. In the same way here, we create enterprise structure. Here in Fusion, we are not continuing with the same term called as multi-org. Instead of calling as a multi-org here, we are calling as enterprise structure. So it's like the naming convention they changed and the certain other components also, other definitions also they changed that we'll see anyway. Already we discussed this point, uh, rapid implementation using the spreadsheet. And the data imports and exports in FSM functional setup manager, how that can be done, we'll see. And the third party application integration of the fusion application, just overview, we'll go through that few points as a functional front. And invoice imaging solution, how invoices can be created in the payables by using the imaging solution, which is inbuilt in the payables. And uh, querying the data from the database, we'll go through that BPM approvals. Complete uh, course training will be delivered with EBS comparison. 
whatever we are going to see in the fusion applications everything will go and compare where we have differences where we have similarity where we have completely new or uh, enhancements everything every topic we compare with ebs and how we do in ebs how we have to do in the fusion how you we just if something is new here how that is there in ebs in the different way there everything will compare with ebs and will be running going through these classes and uh, the fresh environment based and the latest version based training i just mentioned that means even this is a vision instance in case of fresh instance how we start with implementation how we do the configuration how we do everything and that base only will be working on this instance yes we are using the latest version that is release 13 so this is all about uh, the summary of uh, content so if you look at that gl these are the basic configuration we do and these are the different concepts which we'll be working on so all the concepts journal approvals how to load the journals by using the spreadsheets how to load through templates and foreign currencies are reverse journals data access at secure rules cost validation ledger sets reporting ledger secondary ledger sort of post reversal revaluation translation consolidation reporting account inspector account monitor gl period close process when i talk about payables the basic configurations and these are the concepts as a part of payables stand invoice matching and invoices through spreadsheet we can create debit memo credit memo prepayments payments ppr prepayments withholding tax configuration and process bills payables pay alone supplier merge and foreign currency invoice payments interest invoices recurring invoices third party payments cross currency payments in fusion we can uh, handle cross currency payments also invoice in one currency payment in another currency which is not possible in ebs and invoice approvals security profile configure is nothing but moac okay holds and release reasons creation and testing supplier refund aging periods how to create the custom roles in ebs we have menus but in the fusion we have a roles okay how to use that roles how to customize how to compare how to copy and edit all will I'll take you through as a part of payables we'll be working on supplier conversion process and open invoice conversion for that we use fpda templates file based data import templates will be covering these two conversions and creating accounting entries transferred with gl payables period close process payables to general ledger reconciliation here the process they simplified just you have to run the process it will fetch the information from gl and ap with a control account saying that between ap and gl these are this is a difference it shows the difference and it shows the reasons you can go and do, fix it again you can run that report that's how you can just simply you can reconcile payables with the gl you don't need to run manually reports and manually you don't need to just play with all those processes and i'll take you through that uh, how to create the ba report here the intention of ba report creation is to understand how to write the sql queries in the cloud environment otherwise it's a completely technical task we'll see how to create the simple otba report oracle transaction business intelligence report which we can use normally for analysis purpose and when you talk about receivables these are the basic configuration which need to be completed and these are the different concepts which we are going to cover as a part of receivables so invoices debit memo credit memo chargebacks standard receipts miscellaneous receipt batch through spreadsheet receipt reversal standard debit memo reciprocal customers cross currency receipts receipt write off customer refund aging and revenue recognition automatic receipts creation with the setups balance for billing how to review the customers how to load the customers data and auto invoices data open transactions data okay and receivable speed close how to do the receivables with the gl reconciliation we'll just i'll take you through all this and when i talk about cash management the basic configuration and the transaction part bank statements manual creation manual reconciliation automatic reconciliation external cash transaction how to create automatically or manual process and fa related configurations and fa related concepts and fusion expense basic configuration and process expense report creation approving processing for reimbursement importing that expense reports into ap as invoice as a part of fusion tax we'll do the r2r flow configuration primarily and other points which need to be considered in case of fusion we'll talk on that and as a part of transaction We'll test tax calculations in tax simulator and we'll create uh, invoice in the payables or receivables and we'll see the tax calculation along with the results. And the P2P, so we'll cover like a required P2P configuration. Apart from payables, what are the other setups need to be completed to run the complete cycle of P2P will complete. So 
so inventory locations business unit business functions facilities item master actual inventory sub inventories and other required inventory and purchasing setups will complete all these setups and when you talk about the p2p cycle these are the transaction part which we are going to cover create requisition approve create auto create purchase order and how to create the manual purchase order we'll see how to approve it create receipt perform delivery check on and quantity create invoice in ap by matching process payment anyway by the time we'll be knowing very well payment process in ap that we may ignore payment invoice creation up to so what is the cycle so these are the required setups from order management we'll complete all these setups all these setups after that we'll look at the process of creating the sales order validating the sales orders booking the sales order pick release pick confirmation ship confirmation okay integrate interfacing the data to auto invoice interface importing into base tables and just creating the sheet and applying as a complete go to cycle so as a part of functional setup manager fsm will understand what is a functional setup manager purpose we have here and will understand what is the meaning of implementation project as a part of in fusion we have to create the implementation project as with the implementation project you can manage all your setups and you can progress you can track the progress of the configuration within the application so we'll understand what is the meaning of offerings and options as a part of fusion applications and how we have we'll see how to enable the offerings how we can create implementation project how we can assign the task to team members how to set the status how to track and we'll understand the task and task list and we'll go through the overview of the offering documents and wrap implementation process overview we'll see as a part of this so this is all about the course curriculum so if you have any questions on this please thanks man yeah How many Excellent. Days? This. Uh, uh, Excuse me. How many days like, of? Uh, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm just. Uh, I cannot hear you properly. Yes, I said. How many days do we have to cover all this? Quite a lot. Uh, okay. Days. Uh, See so days uh, and stuff. Days like I can say. I uh, seventy hours. Uh, ideally, it's a plan for two months. Uh, it may require to extend for two more months if uh, sorry two more weeks if required say two and a half months otherwise only two two months itself you can complete okay is it monday to sunday or uh, five days a week monday to friday as uh, by for okay. the india calendar awesome yeah okay good Looking forward to it. let me complete lakshman yes. uh, this this is excellent um, thanks for this whole program Uh, i have a quick question though the sub ledger accounting part yeah i'll, I'll be covering i'm i'm sorry i think i didn't mention since uh, we'll be covering as a part of purchasing setups also even from payable okay. side or other our financial side also will touch base it's not a big concept which we know in ebs same we have slightly naming convention and they changed i'll be covering that okay excellent if thank I, you very much uh, raise your hand I'll, i'll just if i forget to you can raise your hand just we can do that since is a pdf converted i could not include in this okay fine next one one question uh, uh, so is a uh, in uh, r12 uh, ebs r12 we have this financial accounting hub is that a separate uh, altogether in in uh, see financial accounting hub completely separate solution that we have in fusion also right uh, that okay. we call as right fh Yeah. In case of EBS, we are calling as financial accounting hub. The same FH here, instead of calling as financial hub, we are calling as fusion accounting hub. Same here also use the term called as FH only, but instead of mm-hmm. calling financial hub, that same financial accounting hub we are using fusion. They name it as a fusion accounting hub. Okay. that we have that is separate solution separate solution so that is available that that we have do you train in that as well or no 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 uh, okay that that we don't have like as a train see for that the big challenge is uh, uh, you, know, you need a uh, instance where uh, oracle will apply the patch then only that can be plugged with your fusion applications 
then the data will sync from from your EBS to Fusion applications. The actual complete uh, solution which Oracle is offering is FHRCS Fusion Accounting of Reporting Cloud Service. Okay, that's how we have. So what it will do is it will pull the data from your EBS system. Okay, it will pull the data with the EBS. Before that, your uh, as of now Oracle is uh, offering that service on that base only, like uh, just to fetch the data. Because you know, like when you talk about FHRC, FH, in case of EBS also, it's all about just bringing the data from the different third party systems and uh, just generating the manager reporting how you require so but as yeah. of now as a part of fusion oracle focus is so many clients are working on ebs right still they are on ebs platform so at least they are trying to give the the benefit to get that e total ebs data into cloud environment okay where they can use this EBS related uh, fusion related Hyperion financial reporting capabilities to generate their reporting based on EBS. If they have a data in the EBS GL site, so they can use only F FSG. We know uh, how great tool is FSG. It's a very uh, lot many limitations. It's it's not a great uh, and powerful tool. Okay, so but Hyperion financial reporting is very powerful tool. So they can fetch the data from EBS GL2, the cloud S-base database. Once data is synced with the EBS to cloud S-base database, on top of it, they can generate the reports. Okay, that's how they're given. One second. So this is the EBS environment. So if you take the license for FHRCS, if you are an EBS consult, if you are an EBS client, and if you take the license from Oracle, for FHRCS, what they do is they'll apply one patch in your EBS environment. They'll apply one patch in your EBS environment that will establish the connectivity with the fusion environment to utilize Hyperion financial reporting as a cloud reporting solutions. So here you could see fusion coexistence mapping. Yes, we can continue with EBS only but EBS uh, GL reporting you can manage with the Hyperion financial reporting through cloud. You can do the mapping, your ledger and calendar mapping with the Fusion. So Laxman, this is a, uh, this is EBS. How why it is doing EBS? How how are it is doing Fusion? Because that they included as in EBS product itself, they included, they're given the provision. Oh, Connect yeah. with the fusion. Before that, directly see here, we can see this uh, page. You can see this page, but this page can be used for real mapping once that coexistence patch is applied in this environment, which will uh, establish the connectivity between this EBS and the fusion cloud targeted instance. Got it. Thank you. So this is how you can use FH in Fusion case, which we call as the solution wise, we call as FHRCS. Now Oracle is focusing on that since there are many clients in the market who are using EBS. So okay. Lachman, if EBS is on-prem, uh, within your uh, on-prem or at a data center and cloud is with definitely with Oracle cloud, yes, yes, how do you stand? Yeah. connection between EBS yes EBS will be having in your on-premise only in your own server okay with that within that server the patch application will be done by Oracle that will build one connect uh, connector which can be mapped with your on uh, cloud uh, the fusion reporting okay the okay and uh, FH will be it will... Cloud and your uh, EBS will be on-premise and the, the network tunnel and all Oracle will take yeah, care through yeah, that. They'll, they'll do that. They'll do the necessary, they'll recommend necessary settings and everything. They'll do from their end what they should do. From our end uh, in our server, what should be done, they'll recommend us. Okay. Yeah. So, Laxman, one more question I have for you. Please. So, what about SLA? 
Yeah, SLA also will be covering. See, that is a serial standard, it, it, which has uh, predefined rules. If you want to modify something, where you have to go, how to modify, just I'll, I'll touch base on that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it remains same, but some naming convention they change. That's all. There is no huge change. Fine. Any other questions from anyone, please? If, if you have any questions, we'll talk about it. Otherwise, for today, we can wind up. In tomorrow's session, we can talk about fusion security and other few talks. Because we have to spend a good amount of time. If I start now, it, it may stretch to 20, 30 minutes. It will be late for a few guys. We'll, we'll start working on those topics in tomorrow's session. If you have any questions, please, no questions. We can wind up for today. Tomorrow in the sense on Monday. Sorry. Lakshman, just uh, one quick question. Monday. Yeah, yeah, Ketan, please. Uh, from Monday, is it possible to start at uh, 6 a.m.? Like in uh, Indian Standard Time, so around no, 9 30 no, p.m. As I mentioned, uh, after uh, three weeks. After three weeks, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Hey, Lakshman, uh, this is Pritham here. Yeah, Pritham. Uh, I heard one question about the GL Delhi rate. Um, yes. So you told uh, from the Excel we can do in Fusion. That's fine, but uh, no one will do in Excel uh, every day. Delhi so rate. in EB. Yeah, for in EBS, what is the solution? Is the file reaches and we have a scheduled concurrent program which will which will take care of that. Yeah, that you so can, in few, yeah, that you can map with the SOVA. You can do that. So in that case, Fusion is tightly integrated with SOVA. If a customer is going with the Fusion, he is forced to take the SOVA license also. No, I guess. No, yeah, yeah, I got your point. See, SOVA can be used in any product, but Oracle is providing SOVA as inbuilt. Okay, so you are saying Fusion application, if I take SaaS, then uh, the SOA is coming inbuilt? Inbuilt, yes. Even, see, in, if you are using the EBS, if you need BI reporting or IP you have to take separate license, right? From respective vendors in past, nowadays from Oracle. But now, the BI reporting and the IP reporting all are part of Fusion only as inbuilt. For SOA, okay, no license and required. If you are taking the Fusion financial, SOA also will come. Okay, so that means okay, so that can take care. It will directly insert into the uh, interface table, and it can take care. Yeah, of it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. I, I I want to make sure this confusion about the you know classes Monday to Friday. Monday. If it is a Monday morning India time, eight o'clock, that's going to be Saturday, Sunday Sunday evening night US time. Yeah. Sunday night. You are right. So for US, US folks, it's a Sunday to Thursday. OK. Correct, correct. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure it's yeah, a confusion. Yeah, I was thinking yeah. Monday to Friday, so. Yeah. OK. Yeah, fine, Shane. So any other questions from anyone, please? Uh, Lakshman, uh, one last question. Uh, so apart from SOA, any middleware will do the job, or only SOA is compatible with Fusion, like TIPCO? And I'm in, in middleware, in middleware, SOA is one component. In our classes, maybe in the next session, for sure, I'll, I'll talk about first so about uh, Fusion security. After that, we'll talk about Fusion Arc structure. Okay, application layer, database layer, middleware layer. In middleware, what are the different components we have and what purpose we'll be discussing. At that time, just uh, we'll, we'll talk on that. So that SOVA is one of the component in the middleware. That's it. So SOVA is not a middleware. In middleware, SOVA is one component. SOVA is a concept. So Sorry? that concept, yeah, yeah, SOVA is a concept. Concept which you can treat as one component, which can be run in the middleware layer. Exactly. So SOVA concept, uh, people has adopted, web methods are adopted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That can be used in any product. Any product uh, uh, just as a kind of uh, plug and play to be, uh, to bring a plug and play environment between the applications okay okay so so tipco can also do the same job yeah any 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 like uh, okay. just uh, you can you can replace that so with the different other products also which will have the same be, uh, functionality or uh, kind of uh, service okay fine yeah it is like uh, oracle ebs connected their otm with ebs through so our concept when they brought Transportation management. Yeah, the, yes. So basically, SOA, SOA, within the SOA, we have many uh, options. One, as you said, the connectors and uh, 
in uh, and, uh, web services we have we have many other options yeah and uh, on the timing uh, lakshman just finally clarifying so tomorrow there is no class no class uh, we will we'll have on monday as per india calendar okay okay and uh, say from 21st apparently tentatively it will be 6 am i i can promise exactly 21st okay maybe within max 3 uh, weeks okay just it it may slip one or two days uh, before or later okay yeah so okay we'll we'll do it by uh, let's say like by end of this month uh, possible bit early okay thank you yeah thanks okay i'm sorry to i'm sorry to ask again i got confused today it's thursday night here tomorrow is going to be friday night are you saying there's no class no class tomorrow you'll have on sunday okay. evening which is monday morning for india oh okay so so no class on friday so class is from sunday to thursday yeah for you sunday to thursday yeah for me sunday to thursday correct correct you are right okay i'm going to be in class sunday see the okay the if you have a evs experience frankly speaking the best uh, option is you can go with the videos you can start playing anyway other side will be running the sessions if you think you can join the session or else you can continue with that so you can quick start and you can go through it uh, side by side one 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 way you can attend the classes other way you can run the videos definitely will find the situation where you would no need to attend the classes once you go through the videos that's how we see now you take the today class we are discussing there are many questions that's how you find every class i i could see many people are not asking the questions the reason others are asking their questions also okay maybe end of the session they'll come to know what they are thinking or expecting to know or more than that so that's how you could see every class so you you can go with the videos option you no need to uh, schedule the time you no need to wait you no need to postpone your personal work or uh, professional work etc etc to attend these classes go through the videos if you have any questions i'll be available otherwise other side anyone will be running the classes if you think okay with this videos won't fit as you expect then you can attend the classes but you never find the situation where videos are not helpful you can find it those are good enough okay just you think on it and you can take your own decision but i recommend 100% videos that will work in any one case if you have a ebs now at least knowledge if you have experience it's you can you don't need to have a second thought you can go ahead with videos you know what lakshman we are consultants in us right so it's possible that the sunday we fly and uh, thursday we fly so mm-hmm. whenever we fly certainly these videos are very helpful but whenever possible we will attend the class yeah yeah, yeah. That, that's how you can plan that really works so uh, lakshman i have a question for you please so on monday and uh, sunday night it is monday morning for you hmm. are you going to start with uh, like a multi org structure no. first or where you no because uh, on a monday session we'll talk about how the security can be managed what are the different roles we have in the fusion what is the purpose how those are when you compare with ebs how those are same or similar we just compare with ebs with the menus okay once we done with that we'll talk about fusion users then we'll talk about uh, maybe fusion arc structure maybe with these three topics uh, may enough to spend that one and a half hour or whatever the time you schedule so Basically, after that job, we'll really- have one more two more sessions will be having on theory okay so monday tuesday we'll be discussing on few more topics which really we should understand before we start with the application even we can start today uh, no issues but we'll lack some understanding when you see something we will fight we should uh, struggle to find out what is that and all before that if we can discuss once we go and see that will become pretty easy before that we'll get more clarity on respect to topic as well as with the comparison of ebs so monday tuesday we'll be having theoretical discussions only on the different uh, topics which we are going to see once we start with the application 
and uh, wednesday we start with the application we start with the user creation and we'll continue from there the job role and the duty role those kind of stuff Data roles, starting on abstract the... roles everything we'll discuss in the next session okay okay you can sorry Hey, Lakshman, this is Raj. Uh, based on our conversation other day or yesterday, I sent you a couple of emails. Can you respond to those? Fine, fine. The uh, sample yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I'll do that. Yesterday, what happened after meeting, there was a few guys oh, okay. and I was discussing later. I left from the office. Okay, I'll, okay. I'll do it thanks. for sure after this meeting. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Lakshman. Yeah, thanks, Raj. Hey, Lakshman, uh, when will we get the instance uh, access? Uh, instance access. Uh, you any chance you subscribe to already? Just for understanding. Yeah, actually, I am from the previous batch. Actually, I just oh, wanted to uh, take this batch. Actually, that's the reason. Your name I could see as AVI. What's your? Yeah, name? yeah, that's correct. Yeah, oh, that's what? correct. It's okay. I have to track the find out the mail ID and that. I'll request you just you send me an email on that. Saying that you need. Yeah, I sent you. I sent you a couple of emails. I did not get any response. But I can right? do so the uh, mapping. I cannot uh, find out exactly what's your name. I don't need your email ID. I need your name. Yeah, it's a ABI. Abi. That's all. ABI. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fine. I'll try to trace with name. Okay. I'll send you after this class. Okay. Let's okay. put you when I send an email by email. That's all now. The one by right there. Fine, Tej. I'll I'll do that. So should I send an email to you again, uh, Lakshman, or like uh, for reminder? Not required. I'll go and uh, check it and I'll revert. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank Fine. you. Yeah. Okay. If no questions, we can wind up for today. We'll connect on Monday. Uh, I also need access to the online uh, portal. Uh, yes. No. What? What's your question? I also need access to. Uh, How to access? The, yes. No. What? What are you are talking about accessing instance or videos? Yeah, the instance. Instance. Okay. We'll, we'll be sharing. We'll be sharing the instance link with the credentials, and you can connect from any device. No uh, All right. additional plugins or okay. direct uh, connection. Like. All right. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. Okay, Lakshman. Have a nice weekend. Yeah. You too, Srini. Thank you. Okay. Any questions from anyone, please? Thank you, Lakshman. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. So thanks for attending this session today. And we'll connect on Monday. We'll continue from here. Uh, have a good day and good night. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks, Lakshman. Thanks, Lakshman. Bye. Take care. Yeah. Thank you.